Hello, this is the first of many videos I will be doing on Stable Diffusion. Um, there's more technical videos out there, but uh, I'm all about simplifying things. In essence, it's the process of using words to create images. But uh, it can be a bit of a, a rabbit hole of endless design. Begin by discussing what I started with, um, which if you search Stable Diffusion, the same thing will come up. Open Art AI. Um, there's many other websites that do it, but I start with Open Art AI and I always end up going right back to it. Create image. As you can tell, there's a credit toil, which every online thing kind of has something like this and also has a subscription situation. It's all sort of kind of like a pay to play. It's evolved a lot since it first came to light, but it's still basically the same setup. So you got the positive, so you could type in cat, you would get a cat. Um, if you want to be extra specific, you didn't get any other animal, you could put dog, and then you wouldn't get a dog because this is the negative. So positive, negative. So if you have some issue where you put in cat, you're not getting what you want, you put in stuff that you don't want and separate it by that. Give you commonly used to make it easier for you so you could just click all these and not really think about it, but it would help to hopefully get a result that you were wanting. As you can tell, there's this, this model situation here. So you got a bunch of different things here. Some are better realistic. Um, some do relatively good at both of them. The XLs, I'm not sure about online. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it still will be something like that, but I know when I'm doing it on the automatic only one, the XLs take extremely long time, but they are supposed to produce much better quality than a non-XL. And then you also see XL Turbo, which is uh, supposed to be like in between the two. Uh, back to what I was saying, there's realistic ones. There's ones that try to do both. Um, and then you got anime. Um, all of these are better at creating a specific effect. Like, this isn't anime, this is more like Pixar. Um, you got cartoon icons. Man, I really did dive into this more. Uh, stained glass portrait. Oh, Legend of Korra. Interesting. Uh, this is supposed to be like a really famous one, but it's always kind of like a paid situation, so I've never actually used it. A resource for this generation to work with to help narrow it down and get the desired result. And you got generation configuration. This is kind of where the credit total would go up. But you got, you know, the dimensions. You got steps. Now, when I first started, I didn't really know what steps in CFG meant. It's how the strictly the model will stick to the props. Lower numbers let AI to be more creative, while higher numbers force it to stick to the prompt. That'd be the CFG, um, which yeah, usually keeping it basically where they have, they have it's pretty decent. If you go all the way up, it'll get really. Um, contrasty. Um, steps really does help the quality, but it just takes a little bit longer, which on something like this, I always just do 100 steps. Um, but if I'm doing an automatic one, one sometimes it might take too long. But it's not really the case with images. It's mo mostly videos nowadays. Um, but yeah, this just improves quality. Quality versus speed. It's one of the things I'm not still super knowledgeable on. But as it says here, it's the denoising algorithm used to generate the image. Different samplers can be good at generating different images. When I first started doing this, it was mostly just the DDIM and Euler and Euler A. I usually still stay, stick with Euler and Euler A. Um, and then Seed deserves an explanation um, because if you're trying to learn it and you don't mess with the Seed, it, it's actually really hard to, to get started. <laughs> Um, let's see what it says for the explanation. A number that determines the initial noise. The same seed usually generates a similar style. So, I mean, that last part's the important bit. How I had it set was basically random. If I did this, I could keep on messing with the prompts and 
look at each generation and you know kind of get an idea of what I should change when you have it on random no matter how much testing it's always going to be extremely different because that seed is also extremely different I don't 100% understand why that's the case but I guarantee you find a seed number and stick with it if you're trying to learn this stuff and you're trying to like have a very specific goal this you can put an image in to again better influence the generation pretty much the same thing except it'll, it'll give you certain different options like depth or pose and then you just got the upscale which increases the quality this will give you a more anime look well this will just focus on enhancing the face so different ways to like narrow down to get that desired result so as you can tell i did the cfg cranked all the way up to the cfg 8 create it looks like that just got done. It's just in the middle of upscaling. It didn't turn out too bad. Okay, that took a while, but uh, so there's there's those two with just the CFG change, and I've changed nothing else. Okay, so the exact same properties. I just want to show you. Well, except I, I did turn off the upscaling. That shouldn't make a big difference. I might have gotten rid of like one or two planets, but it's basically the same image. image. So my demonstration here was changing the CFG. The demonstration with these two is keeping this the same. So what happens when I change it by one number? Now, it's still a cat in our space, but you can tell there's, there's a little bit more going on. Um, I mean... For example, the cat's turned in a completely different direction. It's just easier to test if you keep it solid because it's not by one number when you keep it random, it's by a lot of numbers. Outer space. Cat. It might be kind of immediately hard to tell. Essentially what I did there, whatever is first in the prompt, automatically has the most importance as far as what the AI is looking at and trying to accomplish. You can kind of tell there's more detail in this planet and outer space in general. Um, the cat has less importance. Um, it's not automatically noticeable, but I mean, for example, the eyes, you can't tell the eyes as well. Okay, so the image to image thing. So I I didn't really have a cat right off the bat, but I don't think it 100% matters. So it's preset at 75. The level of randomness that AI adds to the uploaded image. Zero adds no randomness at all, and you will get the same image back, and one will completely change the image. So it's time with this image. So this is pretty much what's at the front of the, um, the prompt, the most important. But based on what you get that value is how much it's actually going to care about it. So right now it's at the default of 0 0.75. So it's, it's going to change, change it quite a bit. It's not going to hold it by a lot of uh, importance, but it probably keep the pose. It's probably the main thing it's going to focus on. The <laughs> outer space cat. Okay, so yeah, that's obviously not very much changed. Let's try 0 0.4 and then we'll move on to the next. Okay, well, she has cat ears. It's better than this. Um, so, comparing these three, well, this one was almost completely change it. <laughs> and then this one was don't change it really at all. This is a little bit more in the middle, but yeah, you can tell that there's some cat aspect to that. So that's image to image. And like I said, control net is essentially the same. And you got a little different uh, modes. And it just adds a conditioning input. Um, a little bit more intricate. I think usually I use canny or depth, so we'll go with depth. As you can tell, it kind of forced its own dimensions based on the image that we provided. Okay, that's an interesting one. 
pretty basic overview of the stable diffusion process uh, and using it on a uh, website. You could edit one of the images. Let's say, I just wanted to change that. There we go. Creepy face still, but blue skin. They also have it where you can train your own model, uh, train it to do a specific style or character or face or object. They do have their own training book that I highly recommend. Oh, okay, so you just click. Um, but you can also download it. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Till next time. See you on the flip side.